two uninhabited Pacific islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. For six weeks, they'll be utterly alone. Holy shit! With only the clothes they stand up in and a handful of basic tools. Filming everything themselves. When pushed to the limits of human endurance, will it be brute power or mental strength that wins the day? We just caught a prehistoric animal. Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the men's island. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. This could be the worst decision we've ever made. This time, it'll be harder than ever. They'll have to endure the height of the harsh tropical storm season. Bring it on, Mother Nature, I say. This is the worst you can do. They'll have to find their own water and hunt for their own food. <laughs> you lazy bunch of bones! Have these modern-day men got what it takes to survive? <sighs> That's the hardest thing I've ever done. Four days ago, I dropped 14 ordinary British men on a remote Pacific island. They've eaten next to nothing. Limpets are horrendous. And after three days of brutal tropical storms, the group began to fracture. What is the matter with you? Nothing the matter with me, sir. Leaving three people threatening to walk off the island. I cannot face another day on here. I'm not going to make the rest of the time on the island. I've been having a laugh up until I heard one of my teammates say they wanted me to go. This has been a prick. Bollocks, absolute bollocks. I'm not having it. I am going off this island because I'm not being held responsible for that. 22-year-old graphic designer Joe, builder Andy and now construction manager Paul are all threatening to leave the island. It's affected you more than I thought it would have. I came here to get away from shit like this, not deal with it every day. So we are three men down in one day when the odds are against us at the moment. And without a full complement of people, we're going to really struggle. You just made this survival thing probably twice as hard. OK, slightly less tactfully, guys. <laughs> We've stood here and talked for an hour. If it really is going to be 11 of us today, us 11 have got a lot of work to do to get through the rest of the day. So if you guys are not prepared to commit to the rest of the group, boom, go. That's right. I've, I've made my decision. I've had enough. I want to go now. Basically, we've realised that a candlelit dinner with a glass of wine is a bit better than uh, being here. Look, we knew it was never going to be easy. But it's not the survival bit that's got to me, it's just all bullshit. I think that's genuinely shitty. Like, I think that's walking away and leaving the rest of us and letting the rest of us down in a big way. Not only is it a selfish thing to do, I think it's the most selfish possible time you could go when, like, all hands are needed. With Paul having made a definitive decision to go, the group are hoping that other builder, Andy, will now change his mind about leaving. Don't leave because of someone else. If he's going anyway, stay and get, get amongst it. How can I possibly stay, man, when a guy is leaving because of me? If you had left, he would have still gone. Andy, you, you, so stay, mean... you can accomplish six things at a time instead of five. I'll stay. I'll stay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Awesome. Well awesome. done, Andy. I'll start. Yeah! Good boy, Andy. Good boy, Andy. That's really... I'm really pleased about that. It's less worry. And it's a heartache to see the others go, but you know what? We're stronger. We're stronger with 12 and 11. As the weather breaks, Paul uses the emergency satellite phone to request his evacuation, along with Joe. This is Paul. I would like to come off of the island. It's either me or one of the others go. 
and I don't want me to be used as a scapegoat. So I believe I am stronger than that person and wouldn't regret this decision. It's going to make everything so much harder. We've not been here for five minutes, really, and we're losing two members of the team. I'm an happy man. I want to be a happy man with a tub of Pringles and a Mars bar. You can only encourage them so much before you end up spending a third of your day encouraging somebody not to leave, when that could be better spent time getting the things we need. Water, fire, shelter, food. Having lost valuable time, the priority for the 12 remaining men is to finish a shelter before another storm hits. We are running on empty, but we are being stubborn and persistent. Fortunately, Andy decided to change his mind about leaving. At this point, there's still so much to do. We need all hands on deck, so losing three people would have been a massive blow. Right, Piers, I'm off. You off, mate? Well done, mate. See you again, eh? Yeah, see you being blighted. When looking to go? I turn round and uh, shake your hand, mate, but... No, it's fine. Uh, f yeah. I'll, I'll, uh... We're sort of structurally integral at the moment. See you later. I don't want to spoil fun, gents, but is there any possibility you could step out of the area while we just start running these struts across? Continue your conversation, just sort of 10 feet over there. Andy! He didn't even acknowledge me. Did he not? No, didn't even turn around and say, dicky bird. Unbelievable, spineless wonders. Fucking hell, lads, what were you thinking? What were you possibly thinking? Just before we came out, I bought a brand new golf. And it's white. It's from the oh, it's beautiful. 500 pound wheels. Lovely view, though, isn't it? After just five days on the island, 14 men are down to 12. It was a bit emotional saying goodbye to everyone. Yeah, of course it was. I mean, in a short time we've been here, we make quite a strong bond. But... Oh, oh, yeah, of course we have. Now the dead weight's fucked off, let's get on with it. Ain't got the time to it, we've got to build a fucking house for tonight. When people leave a survival group, the positive thing is that what it does, it galvanises those who remain, making them even more determined that they can survive. The new group may be less in number, but it will be greater in strength. No, genuinely, I can't believe uh, that after five days we're down to 12 people. It is a shock, isn't it? Come on, it's a massive it. shock. I mean, do you think you'll stick it? Yeah. The whole oh, yeah. thing? Yeah, I've got no doubts about that, yeah. We've been talking about for the last kind of uh, two days, really, that it would be a great shame if anybody left. But I now think we need to look at it positively. And as harsh as it is, perhaps we've streamlined, actually, and more determined. I think those have stayed, you know, have right, showed right. a certain determination. We've got no personality clashes now in the camp. Everybody gets along, everybody really likes each other. We're going to have some really good bonds out of this. Not only the achievement of doing it, which we will, and a new friendship is going to develop between us all. Teamwork makes the dream work, Vic. Yes, it does, sir. Stop staring at my sexy bottom, though. It's upsetting me. I could feel your eyes penetrating my underpants. <laughs> Morale in camp has lifted, but events of the past few days have taken their toll. Oh, I'm absolutely connected. The men have barely eaten since they arrived on the island some five days ago. I do feel like we're staring down the barrel a little bit. We're going to have to pull something out of the bag or go very, very hungry, it seems to me. Are we not wise to have a real good recce of the island? There's going to be wildlife somewhere around that rocky bit. Yeah. There's got to be. We need yeah, to yeah. really go through the, the interior of this island to find out what's living where. We could come across, like, you, you drive in the country and you see all of a sudden a field full of rabbits because they love a certain area. Yeah. It might be exactly the same with the agoutis, exactly the same with the lizards. I think it's a really, really good shot, mate. Yeah. Come on, boys. 5 a.m. the following morning, the hunt for food begins. No heroes today. We don't want anyone losing a leg or arm or anything like that. You've got your stick there, haven't you, fella? I've got a stick. Can I'll grab a stick if you need one. Woo! 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 dance first! A hunt dance! Woo! Yeah! We have an alpha male. 
in our family. And obviously in my house, I'm it. The dogs know I'm in charge. My wife lets me think I'm in charge. My kids look up to me as if I'm in charge. <laughs> Alpha male, you know what I mean? I'm Johnny Wise, Muller, I'm Tarzan, I'm all them things. I'm looking forward to being able to know that I can come the zombie apocalypse or whatever world issue will befall us, that if push comes to shove, I could still provide for my family. My dream is for them guys to go, that's my dad, that, that's fantastic, my dad did that. Iguanas live up trees, is that right? Yeah, keep your eyes absolutely peeled. Shit, I wish I had me glasses. To assure that these guys have a fighting chance of surviving, I've made sure there's enough water, indigenous animals and vegetation on this island to keep them alive. But they've got to have the ingenuity and the skills to find it, hunt it and kill it. Whoa, whoa, look, 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 Rays, fuck, they're shallow, aren't they? We need a weapon. We need a spear. OK, try that, try that. Come on, boys, let's get one of these. Uh, they're going deeper. Stingray's one, survivor's nail. <laughs> Anything that's heart is beating in its chest, I will eat it. Yeah. My biggest observation about living in a jungle is how quickly you lose your sentimentality. When I look at something, I'm not thinking that's beautiful or look at the little creature. I'm thinking, can I eat that? Hurry up, there's an iguana. Just straight through. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You keep your eye on him. I'll go out and round, push him back to you. Quite a mouse. Stamp on him, he flip flops. It's there, I could see it. There's some stingrays, guys. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Okay, he's it. Go, 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 go! Get him! Oh, and Andy, get him! Oh! Get him behind it. Oh! <laughs> Cut him off. Get him, get him! Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh! <laughs> There he is, there he is. That's dinner. Son of a bitch. He's gone. A death man could hear us coming. We are top predator. We've got to stay that way. If we're going to survive, if not, we'll all be going home shortly. The men's first day's hunting has produced nothing. We are winging it. And if it weren't for being such a stubborn person and so, so positive, I think I'd have been on my way a long time ago. For starving and dehydrating slowly is not a nice way to go. The monsoon is coming. Here it comes. Here it comes. Back down the hatches. In the middle of the night, the men are woken by the most vicious tropical storm yet. Oh, 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 oh. It's amazing, from nowhere you get that really big win. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Where's the pan to protect the fire? Fuck! Fucking hell. Shit. Wow, it's coming in. After yesterday's exhausting and fruitless search for food, the men must now spend precious energy saving their fire. This is where we dig deep, boys. This is where we dig deep. But for some, it's becoming too much. Just really, really tired, like unbelievably tired. The lack of dry wood <laughs> is the problem, really. Yeah, that's right now. Lack of dry wood. So tonight's going to be a bit difficult now. Yeah, Barney, these things are eaten, tested, my man. <laughs> I know. It's what we do in adversity, what makes us men. Ooh, ho, ho. See that? Wow! Come on, Mother Nature, do you? which it has been since about four o'clock this morning. And when I say hammer it down, I mean hammer it down. It's, it's relentless. But anyway, my body's starting to take its toll now. Um, I've got blisters all over my feet. I'm shivering and shaking all the time. It's just bloody horrible. It's whooped my ass big time. In fair play to these other guys. I mean, they're like gladiators. Unbelievable. And in comparison, 
I'm a pussy. He's an older guy, he's, and you know, and he is starting to come as part of the seams. No food, no sleep, wet, cold, beaten up. It takes its toll. How's the wood looking, Dan? Terrible. Everything's just absolutely soaking wet. After a night-long struggle, the men managed to save their fire. But now they're exhausted. And it's a perpetuating cycle, isn't it? The more you lack in energy, the less you can do. Having barely eaten in the last week... Belly's rumbling. ..their situation is getting desperate. We need to find a solid source of protein and carbohydrate or we are going to seriously struggle. It's getting to the point now, if you don't eat properly in the next few days, I can see other people leaving this island. Hunting yeah. we will go, hunting we will go. Yeah. Come on, let's rock and roll. The men head out once again on the search for food. But today, 51-year-old builder Andy is too tired to join them. You all right, mate? You OK? Not really, no. You look exhausted. I'm not sleeping at all. Maybe 20 minutes. And even when I am lying there, my brain's still whizzing away, you know? It's starting to drive me fucking nuts. Mm. And I just hope you all. Oh, mate, what? I'm worried about Andy. Yet again, he woke up this morning to say that he's not had a decent nice kid. What can you do, you know? Come on, fella. It's all right. How about this? Let's me and you build a bed with some comfy bedding and a roof. Let's make that. And you've got a decent bed. Right, come on, me and you. Let's go. These are alligators on this island. Son of a bitch! Led by cleaning facilities manager Vic, the hunting party have pushed deep into the island's interior. What have you seen, Vic? Alas, nothing. But finding food in the jungle is no easy task. Wow. It's just full of ants and eggs. Snake! Where? And danger lurks around every corner. Somewhere here is a brown snake. And like shit off a stick. This is good bait. Shit. There's a scorpion in here. Whoa. I do not want to get stung. Yeah, he's gone. Okay. Bastard. I've been tasting from here. There's a lot of things that can kill you on this island. Snakes, spiders, crocodiles. The longer I'm here without a proper meal, the more I realise that if something's going to fuck us up, it's probably going to be a lapse in concentration. Oh, you fucker! There's bats everywhere. Straight out of that tree there. That's where the bats live. Ooh! Can we eat bats? Or is that what give you HIV and Ebola and all sorts yeah, they, of Yeah, don't they carry uh, AIDS? Forget it, we're not eating bats. This island looks very peaceful. You could even say heavenly. But if you look just in a little bit more depth, this place is an accident waiting to happen. So why are you doing this then, fella? I think because my life has been like one adventure, you know, moving from Tenerife, Lanzarote, America, all that kind of stuff. But then the uh, last 17 years, I've been stagnant, doing nothing. So I think this was a way of sort of saying, right, off we go again. And that it is, my friend. Yeah, it certainly is, Jesus. If only I'd have known. You're regretting it? I am at this moment, mate, if I'm totally honest, yep. And my biggest regret, if I do go, would be letting you lock down. I'm trying. I'm really trying. It seems like Andy's already given up. I'm desperate not to lose another person, you know? Can't go from 14 down to 11. I'm dropping like flies. We've not even started yet. Is that not a cable track? Uh, you might be white. Oh. After a fruitless morning in the jungle, some of the men have set their sights on a far more ambitious prize. We're off Cayman hunting. Let's just slow down there. See those trees? That's where it comes out. Yeah. 
28-year-old website consultant Kyle has spotted a crocodile at the end of the beach. Four of us go that side, four of us this side. Keep your eyes behind you. Which the men are hoping to ambush. He's going to see when it comes out. Along the coast, 29-year-old paramedic Barney and cameraman Ross are off to try their luck with improvised fishing rods. I'm going to be incredibly positive. We're going to get um, at least a couple of fish. Yeah. At least a minimum of a couple of fish. Yes. I've delivered three babies in the course of my seven years in the ambulance service, uh, and that's a pretty special feeling. But it's not as glamorous as everyone makes out. You soon realise it's largely dealing with drunk people in gutters, vomit-ridden kind of students. I love Famous Five, Swallows and Amazons. Something about probably going on your own adventure. It takes you back to your childhood, doesn't it? Climbing trees, building dens. It'd be nice to think I've come off the island feeling a little bit more macho, a little bit more popular with the ladies. There's a lot of fish down there. Come on, positive thoughts are going through the rod. Oh, I've got a big one! Woo! Fuck! Ah! down. The men have been attempting to stake out a caiman for almost two hours. But so far, they haven't seen a thing. What do you think? I think some of our hunting team is always ready in action, ready to go. Like a coiled spring. Fantastic we get caiman, but you also need to get water, fire and food. I am starving. Come on in, mate. And plus, everyone's just getting eaten to shit by these sunflies. Well, let's uh, return to camp. Start to finish, absolute joke. Everybody just went up there, asked about it. We had no plan when we got there, no nothing. We were like Keystone Cops. <laughs> so that's going to be great. Right, I'm going to gamble this. Oh. <laughs> hey? There you go. I've been bouncing it. Yeah. Wait. Didn't get any fucking better. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about creepy crawlies. Okay. How about this? If you have a decent night's kit tonight, and stay. I will do that. I promise. Okay. Are we happy? I'm happy, mate. Yeah. You're a wonderful man. Top man. I'm gonna hold you to it, you know. I know you will. <laughs> hey, prom. Bring in the love. All the cupboards are bare. After an exhausting day, the hunting party have nothing to show for their efforts. It didn't look healthy, some of these boys. Some of them look like maybe gone on hunger strike. Well, I'm absolutely burnt out. Today's a day where I definitely feel like I am starving. So the average British man needs about 2,500 calories a day. But the reality of a survival situation here, you know, you're working hard, you're hunting, you're building shelters, chopping wood, you can easily burn in excess of 4,000 calories. The mass of that is simple. If you're burning more than you're taking in, you're going to starve. Can you just let the lads know that we've gone fishing? Oh, I'll have some energy still left in me. With nightfall approaching, the men are desperate to salvage something from the day. Ah! Oh. What the fuck was that? Something just fucking... Oh. Something that stung you? Yeah. Oh, fuck me, do I know about it? You can't see what it was? No. Oh. Definitely wasn't a scorpion, was it? I have no idea. Mike to India, Mike to India. Cameraman Sam uses the emergency sat phone to call the offshore medical response team. Charlie has been stung on the toe from something in a wood pile. Fuck me. Oh, shit, there's a scorpion, yeah. It's a scorpion, guys! Where is it? Let me kill it. Yeah. Scorpion! We just had confirmation it is a scorpion, over. Shit. It's a general rule of thumb. The bigger the pincer, the smaller the stinger, the less deadly the scorpion. Bark scorpion, enough venom in that stinger to kill a man. Not good, man. Not good. I don't know much about scorpions, but I think there is a kind that's very, very poisonous. We were told before we got here that that could kill you. Fuck, man, that's not what we need. The medics have asked Sam to urgently identify the type of scorpion that stung Charlie. Ah, dude, is it, is it painful? painful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
OK, so that length, that is what? Two, two, what you think? two inches long. So he's got big claws, which is a good thing. The bigger the pincers, the less the venom, apparently, so fingers crossed. He doesn't look like a bark scorpion, does he? To treat it symptomatically and keep uh, the response camp updated on the condition of the patient, over. Copy that, will do. Fucking raid is so sensitive. So, uh, good news from the description of this little bad boy here, mm. from that pincer, that probably means he's not super toxic. We're going to keep an eye on you, make sure that that doesn't swell massively and you don't get any other allergic reactions. It's like someone's driving roasting hot needles in and out. Yeah. You think you're milking a bit now, mate? Oh, no, I need to suck it up, don't I? Oh, wait, come on, you're supposed to be English. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't particularly poisonous, but it must have hurt like nobody's business. Poor guy. I Charlie, do not need Charlie, to anything over. Thank Charlie, you. Charlie, seriously, keep your weight I, off. Do you want to go, oh, actually, maybe? Keep, keep yeah, your yeah, weight off. Easy. No pride. Not nice to see anyone like that, really. The boy is what I would like to call OTG. He is out the game. The medics have advised Charlie to stay off his feet for the rest of the day. Let's go and be the saviors of today. Come on, then. OK, uh, Rod. With now only an hour to sunset, paramedic Barney and cameraman Ross set out to make a last-ditch attempt to catch dinner for the group. Yep, yeah, let's go. But to get back to the headland where they've seen most fish, they face a treacherous scramble across the rocks. Uh, that's quite hot, isn't it? and the tide's coming in fast. So I feel like we're in a bit of a risk, actually. I don't like to take risks. We're not going to gain anything by walking back now, are we? Let's, let's do it. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 sorry, hang on. We have to wait for the tide to go out, and then we're making that gap there. So the Pacific really is just a vast ocean. It's actually the largest in the world, covering over 60 million square miles. You've got these fierce ocean currents, they swirl around these little islands, and if you get swept out into them, you really genuinely don't stand a chance. The next stop that way is the Galapagos Islands, if the sharks don't get you first. No, 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 no. Oh, I don't know if this is a good idea, mate, or not. Whoa! Taking quite a risk just to get a fish. Um, it's because we're all so hungry. And you've got to take risks, haven't you, really? What do you think? Is this a bit dodgy or? Good. As long as we're on the same wavelength. Sea's a lot rougher, though. If we get swept up in, we're mincemeat. <laughs> just one of those gets you. Okay, Ross. Barney and Ross finally reach the point where they want to fish, but it's now going dark. You're a big fish, I don't know. God, no. Not in a million years, do you? Ah, oh, it's so exciting. It's that proper survival, isn't it? It's not armchair survival. Oh, my God. I turned round to see a huge wave, probably about 10 feet, engulfed Ross, and then Ross was gone, like that. 
and then I ran down and managed to grab him. I pull him out. <sighs> I've never been so terrified in my life. Finally, see why. Afternoon, guys. Where you been? Hello, boys. <laughs> I'm shaken to say the least. Oh my god. Oh dear. Do you want some water or something? Let's make some room for the guy. Yeah, yeah. That's massive wave crashed right over me. It swept me straight out on the rocks. Oh. No fishing. Yeah. Straight out like that. Grab so the rocks back out. And another massive one took us both down. Can we, can, can we please see no more fishing at night then, please? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You are a true team man, aren't you? It's really made me realise just how careful we need to be and how careful I need to be and about how vulnerable I am. Despite feeling as a young guy that actually you are invincible, out here it's just not the case at all. You all right? You're fresh. New death experience. Yeah. You look shaken, man. I am shaken. Do you have a drink? Yeah. We did get some fish, though, right? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> get back out there. That's what you take from that. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, this is one hell of an adventure, isn't it? It's turned out to be a real yeah, 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 yeah. day. And then a mice game, this. Good night, everybody. I'm sorry, I'm not being rude, I promise. Get, get some rest, mate. 51-year-old Andy hasn't slept well since arriving on the island. I'm absolutely exhausted. Concerned he'll leave if he doesn't get some quality rest, the group are hoping his new bed is the answer. And he's got the skill set that we absolutely desperately need on the island, you know. He's a builder by trade, so he could shortcut so many of our processes. So, you know, I want him to stay. He didn't, you know, I'm sure he didn't come on the island to fail. So if you have a decent night's kit, then you're not going to leave us. That was the deal, wasn't it? If I have a decent night's kit. All right, then. Five a.m. All of the men are sound asleep, except for one. I'm feeling dreadful. I've got an ear infection. I'm shaking. I know I'm shut down. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not happy. I'm not happy, buddy. Right? Andy woke up this morning. First thing he said to me is, oh, "I'm off." It's kind of loud. Paul and Joe have just gone. That pause just gone because of you, Andy. If you thought you were going to go, why didn't you? I just found out that we're losing Andy and our final builder. It's um, almost panic stations. Are you suggesting we're leaving? Are you fucking bollocks? Right, I'm walking away. I'll log you tied to a tree before you fucking go. Andy's threatening to leave's all very well. I like these patients. Um, part of me just wishes if he's going to go, he should just fuck off, really. <laughs> I'd like to say I want the boat here now. Over and out. Bye. Just a day after deciding he would stay, Andy uses the emergency satellite phone to request an evacuation. Andy Pandy is leaving today. Something that I kind of predicted, really. Um, I think Paul was just an excuse. So really, it was a shame that Paul had to go because Andy was always going to go in the end. Take care. I can't give myself or you guys any more, I'm sorry. What can you do, you know? We're down to 11 people after not even a week. It's just embarrassing. When people leave a survival group, the remaining members can often feel this sense of desertion, betrayal, maybe even a little bit of jealousy. I mean, who wouldn't want to leave what for many of them really is a living hell. But ultimately, losing a negative influence will be a good thing for the long term of the group. Feeling pretty tired today. We could do some food. Eight days in, with barely a thing to eat and delayed by Andy's departure. Fucking little fish. The men resume their daily search for food. I don't know why people choose to do this in their free time. Fish? Yeah. I don't do a lot of it. Father-in-law lives it, absolutely fucking lives it. He's a dick. Every day is a winding road. While the others hunt, 29-year-old Barney has volunteered for fire duty. I'm happy, actually, just offering back at base. The group are worried that his near-death experience yesterday 
has knocked his confidence. He literally got swept off the rocks. He's got bumps and scrapes, and if it wasn't for Barney saving Ross's life, things would have been really serious. I think it's just a reminder of what this place is like. It just feels like everything around us is genuinely trying to kill us. He's such a nice guy, so easy to relate to. But I just felt a little bit sorry for him today, so I'm going to keep my eye on Barney. I think he was crying there just before you got the camera. He is finding it really tough. He is seriously lethargic, looks seriously homesick. He needs to get himself back on his feet. Having already lost three men, cameraman Ross is worried the group could soon be in danger of losing another and persuades Barney to join him on a fishing trip in an attempt to lift his spirits. I thought um, you looked really low and that you weren't enjoying yourself and just looked like yeah, you wanted no, to get true. out of here. I was, I was a bit worried that you might go fuck it and leave. You know? I think everyone's having their low days too, right? After any sort of frightening near-death experience, it's very normal to become withdrawn and a little bit introverted, and people tend to then do everything they can to avoid having to face that same fear. But trying to survive on a desert island, the men don't have that luxury. They need to conquer their fear, otherwise it will conquer them. I'm finding it difficult now, actually. Um, I feel like I've had enough of being here. And every time I think about my family, I find it more difficult. And I realise that this week is the week that I'm meant to be um, at Centre Parks. But I just wanted to kind of apologise. There's a little blue fish down here. So have you got a spear? Yeah. How big's the fish? He's a fucking good fish, I know that. Bastard him. In their first week on the island, the men have barely eaten. That spear's not worth donkey poo. Fucking rubbish. All of their attempts to find a decent meal have ended in failure. No luck today, but that's why it's called fishing and not catching. Today's lunch for 11 famished men is slim pickings from the jungle floor. Guys, it. this is exciting. Scorpion. It's got a few ants on it at the moment because we killed it about half an hour ago. Oh. But who's up for an elite? Yes, please. Fuck it, I'll eat it. Heaven in your mouth. Burn the ants off. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> Where's well, the game? Why are giving it to him, then? Why can't I have any? Oh, because you're too northern. I'm it's too northern. Tree, I'm feeling victimised because I'm the northern <laughs> one. <laughs> That's it, you can all kiss my ass. <laughs> you're a brave man, Dan. What's it like? It's pretty gross. Is it? It's like eating crispy poo. Is it? Yeah. I'm glad it was you, then. <laughs> In a survival situation, every mouthful counts. Tell you what, better than limpet. Is it? <laughs> but one scorpion between 11 grown men is nowhere near enough to save them from starvation. It's hard to concentrate. I'm noticing that energy is so low. I'm so bloody burnt out. Man, this place wears you down. It really does. Just tried standing up and then started sort of got the standard head brushes and then really just, I was just sort of rocking backwards and forwards. I don't know, only for a few seconds, but enough to put me on my ass. It's getting to the point now, if we don't eat properly in the next few days, I'm going to drop like flies. Despite their rapid physical decline, the men have no choice but to keep on hunting. It's quite daunting. Thing, really, isn't it? The idea that we might come across Heyman today. 37 year old Sam has persuaded Barney to join him in a bid to keep him busy after his accident. I can't convey how tough this whole thing has been, actually. Far, far tougher than I thought. I'm really, really struggling to, uh, to stay focused and to keep up with the rest of the team. There's a berry on this tree here, look. Doesn't look edible, does it? Shit the dog! Shit the dog! Oh, look at that! 
a big, big lizard under here. It's iguana. I can see it's a big one. Yes, keep going. Yes, there you go, good. Okay, you see him there? I'm going to flick him out. Okay, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes, here he comes. Okay, watch that tail. Okay, you got him, you got him. You got his tail? Put him, 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 put him. You absolute <laughs> star! Oh, star! Oh my gosh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let's, let's talk about this because actually we could use our meat alive, could we not? Oh my gosh. Well done, mate. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Well done, fella. Nice oh. little pony. He's beautiful creature, actually. Absolutely beautiful. Look, he's like a little dinosaur. Guys, it's my little contribution to today. Wow. It's an amazing feeling. You really feel you've done your bit for the team. It's like when you give a really good Christmas present, you just really want to give it. I was thinking, guys, about killing that iguana. Yeah. I think that's probably a bit of a personal thing I need to get over. I'm well, not, killing I'm not, someone? Hang on a minute. Well, because, why, um, is it, why is that such a bad thing that you don't want to kill something? Because the reality of it is that we all eat meat that's killed at some point, and uh, we're so far detached, aren't we, as we all know, from the slaughtering process, that actually, but for me, maybe that's a challenge that I need to face. If you kill it, you will you have repercussions? Think... Sleepless nights? Oh. They're going, no, Barney, I ah, don't give it. Blood, gush, stinking. Let's put this in perspective. That bothers you. I've been a paramedic for four years and seen some nasty yeah. things, but I think I'd like to test myself. Do it. Do it, you want to do it. Don't do an Ozzy Osbourne and bite its head off, though. Funny how you feeling. It suddenly feels uh, much more real when you're having to sit here like uh, the executioner, you know. <laughs> 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 I no, it doesn't it, you doesn't it, go, it goes right over, doesn't it? Like this. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. I'll go and get him. Go and get him down here. Yeah. Woof. So you got, got, got him, got him, got him. Yeah. Right, Tony. Yeah, so if you're able to hold his head down, actually. Spot on. Food you're about to provide. Great effort, Barney. Well done, Barney. You alright, man? Yeah. Okay, yeah. A couple of my really close friends have got iguanas, and uh, I really don't know how they'll view this. I don't think you. I hope they understand that this is completely a survival situation, and I have uh, their pets are not in danger. <laughs> they can leave me <laughs> in the lounge without them. <laughs> It's a very mix of emotions, because you really have provided and you, everyone's got some food tonight, including myself. Hopefully it gives you a more, a greater respect for the animal than, than if I would just sit around tonight having somebody else killed it. I'm going to enjoy that meal more than anyone tonight. I've seen it myself so often, you know, the quiet, humble individual who the group maybe initially discount, but suddenly they can become the man of the hour, just in one heroic moment. And these brave people earn respect through their deeds. They don't earn it through, you know, bluster. And really, that's what British courage is. After a week on the island, the men can finally sit down to a decent meal. It looks like proper food. Isn't that just an incredible sight? Yeah, nice and caramelised the outside. Be beautiful. This is going to be like. <laughs> Is he eating his own neck? Yeah. yeah. That's just sick, Barney. <laughs> they do say that Mother Nature watches what you do, yeah. and if you work hard enough, she rewards you. Today, she did. No. Good job, Barney. Here you go, guys. Well done and well congratulations. Done. <laughs> well done, Team Dalton Elevens. Good job, Yes. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Let's have a little taste, pass them on. Oh, it's delicious. It's really lovely. Oh, oh, so yeah. good. 
The first time of eating something, which is ridiculously, amazingly brilliant. Oh, that's like a good piece, Barney. Yes, it is, mate. Oh, yeah, Barney oh, boy. Yeah. There's more meat on this than I thought. Turtles, turtles. Hey. Oh, yeah. Eleven of us sitting around that caveman, just gnawing and slurping and chewing and staring into the flames. Great. Grr. You've now literally cut his face in two. There you yes. go. Yes. Feeling increasingly manly as the day goes on. Mm -hmm. See what it brings the group. It all feels worthwhile. No complaints with this at all. No, yeah, great. I think your head might be my favourite bit. With food in their stomachs, the men's thoughts turn to Andy's unoccupied bed, which is now up for grabs. No wanky in the individual bed, please. OK, I've completely misunderstood what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone not want out here? Dude, after the third night, Every morning, I woke up I'm prouder than a honeymooner, though. <laughs> Seriously, you could want, like, a single man A-frame. Come see me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Buzzing tonight. Buzzing. It felt like a bunch of 11 mates sat around the campfire on a wee holiday, eating great food. The Fantastic 14 is now the excellent 11. <laughs> I'm under no illusions that shit times will come, but in the meantime, I'm going to embrace the good and the good. It's right now. Help! Back in! Next time on the Women's Island. I'm coming! Radio in now. Medic now. Oh my God. What's just happened? Just collapsed. Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> the group has still separated. Oh. Everyone needs off here. It's not a programme, it's ridiculous. We can't navigate. I can't walk and I'm just fucked and we're all fucked. <laughs>